Hello everybody, welcome back to Ernst and Release. Uh, this is the second time I record this video because I edited from the <laughs> CFX Plus B card and I forgot to put the files on my computer. So I, when I went back to edit the video uh, after I imported it in DaVinci Resolve, uh, I was greeted by this, which is uh, annoying. <laughs> so I'm filming that again after that frustrating experience. So, today we're going to talk about MPB, um, and I'm going to do sort of a, you know, a long-term review of their services, I should say. Um, so, I already made a video about MPB about a year and a half ago when I talked about the D700, and I only made a single purchase through MPB when I made that video. So, at the same time, it was worth talking about, I think, because it was a, a bad enough experience that it was worth, you know, telling the tale, quote-unquote. But at the same time, only one experience through a platform like that is not super representative of their actual level of services. So, uh, I've used MPB if quite a few times, like more than a dozen, a, a dozen times or something like that. Uh, in the past year or so, and I thought it would be a good idea to you know share my experience about that, because now I have a bit more experience with them. So, okay, <laughs> longer experience with them rather. So uh, I'm gonna classify all of my purchases in three categories. Uh, the one is going to be another you know, one that went bad. You know, I got less than what I paid for, or it went like the thing that I got was um, defective in s some kind of way, s stuff like that. There is the second category, which is going to be the uneventful, you know, uh, either I got exactly what I paid for and there was no other problems, didn't have to send back anything, the, the product I bought worked as advertised, stuff like that, or there was some problems, but there was also some positives, and those positives are not outweigh the negatives. And so I consider them to be acceptable, and overall I'm okay with the, you know, the transaction that went down. And the third one is going to be the instances, because there, there has been a few, uh, the instances where I got more than what I paid for, generally because they were not really uh, super, you know... <laughs> thorough in the um, inspection of the gear that I had, so I got more, I ended up with more than what I paid for. So without further ado, let's get into the uh, very first category, uh, which is, I'm going to start with the uneventful because it's the most boring one. Uh, uneventful, actually I got quite a bit of items <laughs> that went actually pretty right. I, I, I don't have much complaints about it. Uh, the best quote-unquote one out of this was this Sigma 100 to 400, if the camera wants to focus on there. I think it, it did, yeah. This is a Sigma 100 to 400. I added a third-party foot on there. Uh, F5 to 6.3 um, DG OS HSM Contemporary. This is a long name for lens. Uh, this lens had some plastic marks on the bow uh, and uh, they classified this lens as very used. Uh, it generally goes for, I don't know, something like 600 bucks on MPB. I'm going to show up the prices if I'm wrong. Well, sorry. But uh, it when I bought it, it'd go, it it went for about 600 bucks, And I got it for 450 So, pretty happy about that. Especially considering that the optics are pristine, pretty much. And the autofocus mechanism is also brand new. So, um, yeah, that lens works as like new, pretty much, just some marks on there. So honestly, I think that um, it's a lens that they maybe had, you know, a bit... They were a bit heavy-handed on the uh, price reduction that they applied to that lens because of the cosmetics. That's just my opinion. Maybe that's how they do for everything else and maybe that's the price that you should pay for. I don't know. The thing is... I think it was luckily okay when it comes to pricing. I uh, it, it was pretty much the same thing when I was looking locally, so okay. Uh, two very uneventful purchases that I had was my FTZ2 for my Z6 and my 40mm F2. 
both for and 200 bucks and both came with the original boxes manuals everything nothing to complain about here um, then there was that mbd10 grip for the d700 and d300 which i bought for a stupid cheap price of like 10 or 12 bucks something like that because it didn't came with the tray for the ENE, for the ENEL3 but that was exactly what i look what i was look, looking for it was it came with the you know the cap for the ENEL4 because that's with that battery that you are able to get you know the improved performance on those uh, D700 D300 cameras so that was what i was lo looking for and the thing that i was looking for meant that it was reduced in price so all beneficial for me but yeah the product works uh, there was some you know cosmetic problems on there like the paint is gone but i don't care at all about that and that's all she wrote pretty much um and next was the 760 millimeter macro f2.8 good lens no problem it came with the original packaging the lens was basically brand new the price wasn't like too different from the price that you pay for that lens brand new like the br the brand new price might be around 150 ish euros and they paid 115 for it and it's not like a dramatic reduction in price but i thought it was like worth it to go for a used item instead of a brand new one for stuff as cheap as this so here we go and the last one which was an eventful like no issues whatsoever was the xt2 grip the original one i had a third party one but i replaced it for the um nine volt jack uh power jack here so yeah the decent price pretty much brand new condition bit used here but i don't care and yeah that's it no problems now let's talk about the unevent like kind of uneventful ones that had a defect but at the same time they didn't really Put the right price on it and i'm going to start with the nikon d1x which i bought for i don't remember if the camera can focus on there probably prob yeah still some problem with the z6 out focus i mean face detection right now by the way i'm testing things out so pardon me there's some autofocus mistakes here but this is a, Ni a, Ni a nikon d1x uh, i bought that camera for 71 euros <laughs> Which is very 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 cheap i didn't think that it would come with a charger and this is where you know i got it was like balancing it out because they listed that there was some fungus in the in the viewfinder which i didn't really care about but they failed to see that um there was fungus on the sensor as well like under the sensor glass pane that is protecting the sensor which that means that if you close down the aperture of your lens you're seeing that uh, you can still shoot wide open with like wide aperture lenses and you don't see it, which is okay for, for me. I'm not, it's not a camera that I shoot a lot. I have it mostly for the collection aspect of things. Uh, but yeah, that was a pretty big mistake that didn't see it. My guess is that they didn't have the power adapter to put the camera in uh, sensor cleaning mode. So they couldn't check the sensor really. I had to go into bulb mode to check that. And yeah, that's a bit of a problem, of course, but at the same time, I got the charger for free. And if you know your D1Xs, or your D1, or your D1H, uh, you know that the charger, the, I think it's the MH, you know what, uh, give me a minute, it's right here. So I'm just going to take it out. Yeah, it's the MH16 charger, like the, the big brick with a cable that goes straight into the, into the battery. This thing goes for like 100, 150 bucks on the used market right now, like locally. And so I got basically it for free with the D1X, which tells me that they just didn't know what they were selling, pretty much. Uh, if they knew, they would have priced it much, much, much higher than this if they included the charger with it. And um, the uh, next purchase with it, which you know, it's a bit within the theme, is this Nikon D300, which I bought for only 59 bucks. Uh, this is a camera that I bought um with they said there was like big fog in a, a, a bit of fog in the screen in the back which is obviously true when i got it but it's not nearly as distracting as you could think list by you know go 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 going by the listing on the website but one little defect that they failed to see is that the back dial is not registering every input so you need to go through two or three before it registers one uh, or you have to press on it so i guess there is a bit of a false contact here and 
yeah, they fail to see, they fail to diagnose that on the camera, even though that's still, that's one of the defects that they generally list on there. So, you know, that's something uh, that they should have listed. But at the same time, for 59 euros, I think that I got more than my money worth for that camera. So it balances things out. Um, so that's about it when it comes to an eventful or I'm okay with it, you know, st type of stuff. Now let's go straight to the bad ones, and I have only two, actually. The first one, you already know it if you've watched the previous video, and that's the D700. I'm not going to go too much in detail. If you want to know more about what happened, just go watch that video. But in uh, in short, um, I bought a D700 for about 300 bucks, and when it came in, it was uh, defective because the aperture lever on the inside of the lens mount, which controls the aperture of your lens, uh, was stuck in the down position instead of being up. It's, it needs to be up to be able to meet it properly. And so that meant that the camera wasn't able to take any properly metered image. So it was a bit of a problem, to be honest. And um, uh, yeah, I had to send the camera back. Uh, there was no problem there, the, the, the written policy was good and stuff, but um, I was, you know, expecting a little bit of a commercial gesture, I guess, because it was their fault, like, they failed to see a pretty big defect, which was, which only required you to inspect visually the lens mount, really. Uh, so to me, that's a lack of training on MPB's technician's part, so, you know, that's something they should probably have fixed by now, because I haven't seen or heard anything close to this kind of problem associated with MPB sense, but I mean, you never know, sometimes there's things that flies through the net and <laughs> doesn't get caught or anything like that. So I was expecting a bit of a commercial gesture because they uh, allowed me to pick another one. I tried to stay fair to them and I picked one that was listed at 305 euros instead of 300 and uh, they made me pay for the difference. I was expecting them to make that free. If, they, if that was like a, a hundred bucks, yeah, I would have paid that gladly, but that was only five bucks. I expected that to be free, but anyway, the shipping back to the camera was free as well, so no problem there, but yeah, I would have liked to get my replacement unit for free, considering it was their mistake, but they never admitted to it. I, I basically just made a return if like if the camera wasn't fitting me or anything like that, it was not that, it was not, the camera was defective and you failed to see that, guys, so it's not the same thing. So, um, yeah, that, that's my worst experience with MPB so far. And then we have this. This is a camera I'm going to talk about in a few weeks or months, I don't know how long I will take to review that camera. This is a Canon 5D Classic. Uh, I took that camera because I've got a lot of comments uh, with the D700 video uh, where I should try the 5D as well, so I got a 5D. Uh, there was one that was cheap for under 100 bucks. I was missing the ports though, I replaced it since. Uh, but um, yeah, when I got the camera, I wasn't really planning on getting any EF lens. Uh, a friend of mine lent me uh, this 50 millimeter, so I'm, used, I'm, I'm gonna use the camera with that. But I also got a Nikon F mount adapter for the for the EF mount, and that was what I was planning on using, you know, pretty much. And the problem was that was I was what I was focusing on with uh, the lens in the viewfinder wasn't what was in focus on the final image that when you were looking at it on the screen or a computer later. Basically, the plane of focus was a little further than what I was focusing on in the viewfinder, and I searched <laughs> a little bit around the camera, and the problem was that the focusing screen was too far away from the mirror, so I had to put spaces on to bring it cl a bit closer, and now it's okay, it's good, but it's, it was a bit annoying that it wasn't a defect that they were able to see, which is, you know, sometimes a little bit of a, a problem. So I was able to fix the camera myself. I didn't pay a lot of money for it, so even if I wasn't able to fix the camera myself, it would have been it wouldn't have been like a life and death situation or anything like that. But it was still something that they failed to see. And uh, granted it was a bit harder to see than on the D seven hundred. 
that you really need to put like manual focus lens and do the thing but honestly i feel like it shouldn't have been uh, a camera that was put on the market at all it should have been caught sent to repair something and you know i don't know if that's something they do at all but they shouldn't have put that camera on sale i think so that was my i guess second worst experience with mpb and now we're going to talk like completely of the opposite side of the things uh and we're going to talk about the things i i got more than i paid for you know when it comes to these cameras i'm going to start with the minor one uh, i bought um as an everyday carry a panasonic lx5 and i knew that the battery life was not great you know those batteries are i think like 4.3 watt hours or something 4.5 that was bad math there but um yeah those batteries are not lasting long and i thought to myself well i should maybe buy a second battery for that camera and i was already like looking at replacement on amazon or something like that and when i got the camera there was a battery in a charger and in the camera so i saved about 15 bucks uh, of a replacement battery because they forgot <laughs> i guess to remove the battery from the camera or the charger and i should have i should have got like a single battery but i got two so i guess they was just a little bit negligent and didn't remove either of them so yeah minor thing but st still worth mentioning uh then there is this sigma sa 20 to 40 millimeter f2.8 which goes for about 150 ish on the used market and on mpb a bit higher than that maybe 160 and it was listed with a heavy amount of fog of fog of moisture inside the lens which made it a lot softer according to them and when i got the lens it, i couldn't see anything inside the lens and when i used it it was sharp as a knife like according to all the reviews I've read of that lens, it's pretty soft wide open, but it sharpens up extremely about f4, f5, 6. So that was already something that happened when that lens was released and not something that was induced by any moisture in the lens. So I guess they misjudged it and priced it around 80 bucks. So maybe half price of that, what that lens generally goes for. So by buying this one, I definitely got more than uh, what I paid for. It's all good. And then we have the best case of, I would say, MPB incompetence working in your favor. And this is with this camera. This is, there's a leather strap on it, don't mind, but this is the Sigma SD Quattro H. Um, when I bought that camera, I was looking at uh, SD Quattros, not the H version, because I saw a forgotten camera video about the SDQ. And I was like, okay, that's a cool camera. Maybe I'm going to pick one up someday. I looked at the used market. They were all around 800 bucks. I was like, okay, maybe not. <laughs> I looked at the MPB. There was no SDQs at all in stock. And I was like, okay, I'm going to you know, place an alert. And if there is one that goes on MPB, if the price is right, maybe I'm going to try to buy it. Lo and behold, two days later, one comes up on the website. I go and check. And it wasn't an SDQ, it was listed under the SD Quattro category, you know, there was two categories, the SD Quattro and the SD Quattro H, it was listed under the SD Quattro, and it was indeed an SD Quattro H. And it's not something that is hard to see, there is a big H. If the camera can focus on there, you know, if I can do this, like that, you can see here that there is a big H on the camera. and it's something that, you know, you should see <laughs> when you are a professional camera, re camera reseller, you should see these type of things. And if you don't know what the SD Quattro H is, uh, again, I made a video about the SD Quattro, so you could go look at that video. But basically, the SD Quattro H is the APS H version of the SD Quattro, which was much rarer and much more expensive. I wasn't, I stood up, wasn't able to find one, a single one in sale on eBay or any, or anything else in Europe, in Europe, which is pretty surprising. Generally, there is quite a bit of cameras on sale in Europe, but not in this case. And the only two I could find on eBay was like, were like Japan imports, 1300 bucks or something like that, which I was not paying at all. And I bought that one for 629 bucks. 
So yeah, they just didn't see that it was an SDQH, not an SDQ. For some reason, I don't know, somewhere in the pipeline, you know, there was there should have been someone that saw it and said, oh, wait a minute, that's not the right thing. And there wasn't. So that's basically all the purchases I've made through MPB in the last year or so, year and a half, actually. And to me, the conclusion of that is that you shouldn't really trust MPB when it comes to condition, defects listed, or even sometimes the model number, you know. Um, you really should look at your gear when you get it, and if it's not okay with you, just send it back, okay? They have a very good return policy, and do it. So, yeah, just check your gear, send it back if, if it doesn't suit you, and that's about it. But, yeah, I think they are very unreliable when it comes to, you know, the listing the defects and judging the condition of their items. I, I, I don't know if that's linked to a lack of competence or anything like that, but I really do think that they should, you know, put a bit more care about that. So um, that's about all I wanted to say about this uh, matter of, you know, MPB, should you buy through MPB? By the way, if that wasn't obvious, I'm not sponsored. This video is not sponsored. I'm not, I, I'm not you know, encouraging you to go on MPB specifically. In fact, all the gear purchases that I've made, which are a little bit more expensive than I would uh, like to put my money through MPB now, uh, I always look in the more in local market first. Typically, my Z6, my XT2, um, my XH1 before I sold it, of course. Uh, all of those cameras I bought through the local market without any platform being involved because the price has better. The, the prices are better, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's about all I wanted to say. Now, if you have any European compatible, <laughs> okay, I don't want to try some KEH with 50 bucks shipping, okay, but if you have some recommendation of European platforms that I should, I'm probably not aware of, please drop in, please drop them in the, in the description and I might check them. Um... And yeah, I'm, I think I'm about done. So see you guys next time, I guess, probably. I don't know what the next video is going to be. Right now I'm in the process of reviewing the Z6. I'm also in the process of testing out the 5D. Don't ho I don't have like a ton of time to shoot. And you know, you know what, we'll see what comes first. But um, yeah, see you guys next time.